What Throwing Waves has been, from the beginning, very open to when they mess up and are quick to give out compensation as a result. The compensation is warranted as players are experiencing real-time issues. So they are expected to be given free stuff, <clears throat> I mean, they are expected to be given just compensation for such. Even when in reality, 70% of the players didn't even know that there was an issue to begin with. Being showered with rewards in the space of an open world gacha game is unprecedented. In other gacha games that don't have as big a budget as Wuthering Waves or Genshin Impact, getting a ton of rewards can be normal. With games like Nikkei and Brown Dust 2, the budget for these games isn't high enough so they can actually afford to give out a lot more freebies. This is not the same for an open world gacha game with such complexity, but Koro Games sets a high bar at launch. A free 5 star character of choice, Astri after Astri compensation packages, 10 pull packages, credits, we got it all. They eventually lowered the standard compensation to around 100 instead of 1600 but it's still a nice bonus whenever it happens. Things were just starting to ease up and we weren't getting as much compensation because they were steadily fixing issues but then they dropped another bombshell. Hey. In version 1.2, we're giving you another one. Take this free 5 star just cause, well, because we feel like it. Like, Koro, what is the occasion? The bar has been raised even higher, but will they be able to meet our expectations for this game? I'm Void Enigma, and I'll be explaining why generosity in Withering Waves is a massive problem. Not for Withering Waves, however, for every other gacha game. A free character in an open world gacha RPG is not something that happens often. Genshin has never given a free 5 star character to this day. And for those of you who say that Aloy was a free 5 star non-sarcastically, I am going to throw hands in the comment section. Just kidding, I love you all. But not as an anniversary, not for a lantern rite, not even for an event or achievement in game even though we won countless game of the year awards for the past 4 years. Honkai Star Rail, while not being completely open world, gave out Dr. Ratio for winning the Mobile Game of the Year award. This is a huge achievement and it definitely warrants a big reward for the community. Among other gacha games, a free character is just not a daily occurrence, especially a free limited character. They are given out on occasion, but these characters don't just pop up willy nilly. For the anniversary, half anniversary, we can expect something like that from a few different gacha games. But we're neglecting to remember Kuro Game's roots, Punishing Grey Raven. In PGR, Kuro Game gave out free characters every 6 or so months. Free characters being premium units. These free characters were yours to choose and all you had to do was participate in the event or it was just an anniversary or you literally just start the game, they let you pick a free character. At first, it was just the standard characters that started with the game, but eventually they even added limited characters and you just can't get any character that was recently released. So it's definitely not surprising that they share the same generosity in their new game. You can sense the empathy and understanding from the dev team if you really read their developer's message. They genuinely want you to enjoy the game and continue to play it. If there's an issue, then they say, hey, let's work together and fix it. Keyback is a key feature that they really talk about quite often, and they really stress that they will continue to listen to player feedback. In each of their developers' messages, that is the key point. For instance, in this update, people are having trouble with using Chisia as the gun gun girl to solve all of the gun puzzles. Personally, I like Chisia, but with that being said, I can understand how it's very immersion breaking to actually swap characters mid game or mid exploration, but Koro just said, hey, we got you. If you want to actually just use this gadget here, you can summon a pod and that will shoot things for you so you don't have to swap characters in the open world. It took them one update to implement this change. A change that we asked for in the beginning of 1.1, it's now going to be here in the beginning of 1.2. Meanwhile in other games, you have to swap your whole team around to do elemental puzzles and actually change to archer characters and do this and it's just cumbersome. Some may call all of these compensations a bribe or people are saying that they had to fix these issues anyways, but 
Either way, we're receiving the good end of this deal because we are getting these conversations and we are getting the fixes. Either way, a bribe is the easiest way to keep me invested in a game, especially when I enjoy the gameplay so much. The devs genuinely want us to enjoy the game and they make sure that we know that that is their primary motivation. Money is their secondary motivation. This should be the standard for any game as the player satisfaction is what makes the game all the more better. As long as they keep this up, I am 100% behind Wuthering Waves. All I ever wanted from my main gacha game is clear communication and they continue to deliver. The generosity is beyond the scope of Wuthering Waves however because if the scope of this game grows even further, then that means that other games may follow suit. It's pretty much understood that every gacha game has copied Genshin Impact's winning formula as of now, but Genshin Impact has been firing off a barrage of quality of life and seemingly fair compensation as soon as Wuthering Waves is released. Boy, it's funny how the tables turn, huh? Eventually, I'd love to see generosity being a normal thing in other games in general, so maybe other developers will see that it is possible to be both generous and make money, especially with the way that Wuthering Waves has been handling it, but we'll have to kind of see. Either way, these games make so much money. Giving out free freebies every now and then will not stop them from making money. Did I seriously just say free freebies? Anyway, it motivates people to actually spend regularly because they feel appreciated. Forcing players to spend on the game out of frustration for the system is a bad way to retain players. All you're doing is retaining an angry player at that point. Let's talk about the Genshin Weapon Banner, for example. If you lose two of the 40-40-20s or whatever the hell it is at this point, and you're 50 pulls away from getting that weapon, and you happen to have a spare $100 laying around, and you know that if you don't pull on this, are you really going to go to sleep knowing that you just wasted 150 pulls? Or are you going to swipe and get those 50 pulls and get that weapon? Now, that's okay if it happens once, but imagine that happens twice, four times, ten times. And each time, you find yourself spending a little more money than last time to achieve the same goal. Eventually, you're going to get frustrated with the fact of how the system works, and there is no word from the devs to hear your frustrations. Like, come on now. Let's be honest, most people are not burnt out from Genshin because of the exploration or the combat. It's the system and the limitations imposed by the system. Plus the fact that bugs are kind of swept under the rugs and thanks to the 300 Primo gems given every update, we don't really see changes per se. Generosity is the best way to retain players. If there's nothing to be angry about, then why would you stop playing the game? Anyway. Let me know what you all think about Kuro Games' generosity. Does it make you want to support the company, or do you just not care? I mean, free shit is always good, am I right? Go ahead and like this video if you found it enjoyable, and make sure to subscribe for more Wuthering Waves content. Until next time, Enigma out.